Today's sermon will be on our white glory and pain. Our white glory and pain. Hmm. First, America. This must be and will one day be a true Christian white America. If you will, a new Jerusalem. And we look forward to that kingdom. We look forward to a new type of Jerusalem that is being formed in this nation. And it's not going to be without God's word. Don't you think for one minute that it will be founded on men's ideals, on men's logic, on men's money, on men's system in any way, shape, or form. It will be founded upon the Word of God. We will live according to that Word, my dear friends. And I look forward to that day when we will have truth flowing throughout our nation. Right now, we have the Antichrist flowing throughout our our nation. I can assure you of this. Also, we are not going to be a mixed multitude in that day. Amen? Some of you may not know whether to say amen on that or not, but I can assure you, God, because I have the authority of God's Word to base that on, and I'm not going to prove everything to you today, if you haven't gone over our messages and, and heard other messages by other speakers, I don't know what to do for you. You better get busy. But I think most of you know the truth. You're here because you want to hear the truth. You don't want to be lied to. Do you want to be lied to? You want a president or you want Congress to lie to you? Well, that's what they're doing today, of course, aren't they? Most ministers of the Judeo... Christian gospel are lying to you. We want a new and a righteous nation. We want the kingdom of God. God is surely dealing with our nation these days. They tell us that we are a racist nation. Well, our nation is far from a racist nation. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean this, this nation has been embracing, you know it as well as I do, all kinds of perversions and adopting and accepting strange flesh, haven't they? They call us a racist nation? And yet all this is going on today? I want you to think about what the sodomites these queers have been doing to our nation. Oh, I, again, people say, I don't want you using that term queer. What do you want me to use? That's exactly what's happened to us. That's what they've done to the military. That's what they have done through, throughout this nation. And they have been teaching this sodomite way in the schools. They have been embracing this in the universities. They have been embracing this in the hospitals, throughout their pharmacia. In our pharmacia, yes. That's one of their big now these days, holy temples, is it not? So they've been embracing this also in our religion, haven't they? Ordaining homosexuals to the ministry, loving that which is evil and calling it good? What does the Bible say about that? Well, you know it. It, it warns us about that. We've been warned about a lot of things. Are we paying attention? Are we just turning a death ear to this perversion that's going on throughout our nation? Right now, America, as we know, is under siege in so many different ways. But you know, the Bible has warned us about this. Amen? 
Our food supply, for instance, is being depleted. How many of you know that? I think a lot of you are aware of that. You better wake up, America. We've been war- I've been warned uh, by lots of things that have come my way, and they're just shocking to see this is coming out now. Now, we know about the COVID bar, uh, uh, pandemic and all of the deceptions surrounding that. We know how they are using it. And by the way, we may, may very well see many more deaths take place in our nation from the, these diseases, manufactured or not, because they're perpetrating this upon our, the American people in so many different ways. People are going through lockdown, wearing these masks, doing all kinds of unhealthy things. Do you not think that is going to have its toll and effect upon the people? Massive controls are here in lots of different ways. But again, I want to remind you of this danger. And it may very well end up being a pandemic of a worse sort than we could ever imagine in our nation. Because we haven't seen things like this happening, have you? No, you haven't. No, we haven't. Why? Why are we having this now? Well, you know what? Because God wants it to happen. God wants it to happen? Yeah. This would not be happening, my friends, were it not for God Almighty allowing this to happen to our nation. To what? Well, I'll say, in part, waking us up. Is America awake? I will go over again 911 and the fall of the Twin Towers. Did we awaken at that time? Oh, we were so sorry at the time. We went for maybe two weeks of, quote, repentance. And then we went right back to, you know, worshiping our sports, worshiping our idols, worshiping this and that and the money system and the, and, um, all the benefits that we may supposedly receive, uh, receive from this. And even religiously today, look at what has happened. Now, I'm talking about right now even. Even with this COVID-19, are churches full? No, they're practically in many cases depleted. I have never, we have never here at America's Promise closed down our doors because of this pandemic. We went right into this. Like, it kind of reminds me of David. Gee, my name's David after all. <laughs> I, I, I just thought of that, seriously. I don't know. But we did not uh, back down at all. We held services because our God is the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahweh, who is very Yahweh. We did not quit having services at all because of the higher power, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? That's why. In plain and simple terms, that's why. But you know, also we're going... into a plastic money system. They're promoting it more and more until they want to, I think, deplete that old money system. They've had this control. They're just moving, they're, they're just moving into a, another form of that money control. Yes, they're tightening. And I can feel that noose around me. But I can also feel the hand of God upon me. Can't you, my friends? Where is your faith? I ask people. Where is your faith today? Where is our faith supposed to be biblically? It is to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We, he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. We are to be following that truth and that life. Because it's our way out, to make a long story short, is it not? It's our way out. There are many ways, as I said, that lead to destruction, but there is this straight and narrow path that we are to go down. It's the narrow-minded way. Yes, it's the narrow-minded way. People say, are you narrow-minded? You bet I am. I'm narrow-minded according to the word, what the Word of God says. And so should we. Oh, I'm open, you know, to all of these different things going on. You know, I think there's truth in everything. Well, I don't. And neither does the Word of God tell me that. There are many roads to deception today. What are they doing today? What road are they going down? Well, let's see. They're staying six feet away from each other. They're wearing masks. They're living in fear. Even today, at months and months after this whole situation, and in part we all know that they're doing it because they don't want Donald Trump. But also, they're doing it against people like you and I. They hate us. And you know, God's Word really warns us, if we'll think about it, about this hate. Because it stems from Esau and Jacob. God says, Esau have I hated. Oh, I wonder... You know, sweet Jesus, would you really, it doesn't really mean that, does it? Yeah, it does. And we better wake up to that fact that these people are hated. But these people have caused even our people to a large extent to hate Jesus Christ as well. They've twisted and turned their very hearts through a lot of different things that are going on today. And you know it. It's happening in the schools. It's happening in our education. It's happening in our religious system. It's happening in our money system. It's happening all over. One thing I'm very glad of is that, is that sports are dying. <laughs> Let's, I encourage that, friends. I encourage the sports to be dead today. Yes, God is casting the idols down. So what should we be? Christian, kingdom Christians. Again, through repetition, Jesus came teaching the kingdom parables. So what should we be? Kingdom Christians. Our true king, Jesus Christ. And I might add, oh, this will sound racist to some people who do not understand but we should be a white supporting people. A white Christian supporting people. If we could get back to that. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, this will solve all of our problems. No, we need to get back to God's Word in this area and that area. But this is one area that I'm talking about right now, to our white roots. Because we did at one time understand that and preserve that and fight for that and die for that. We had a love for our kindred. We had a respect for our kindred and their hurts and their and different things that would go on. And we would try to help them. But all along they kept the enemy was right there. And the enemy would say, over here, there's a void. We need a bank. Let's put a bank in there. And they kept this deception, lots of ways of deception, up to we got right now the type of Congress we deserve, do we not? We have the type of religion that we deserve. It's not a Bible faith. It's not a Bible religion. Oh, they have a certain amount, yes. But they also, it's mixed with lies and deception. If we really had the truth being taught, do you think we would have half the problems that we have today? Nay, we would not. I go back even to a form, a form 
of the hellfire brimstone preaching that used to take place years ago, which included warnings about our activity, the things that we used to do. They would warn people about certain things. Well, I'm warning you about certain things, and I'm not a hellfire and brimstone teacher by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm warning people. I am trying to be a minister of the gospel. I'm trying to be a true prophet of God that he has called me to do. Today we have wolves, snakes, and terrors. And... They're trying their best, as we know, to run things today. Well, let the heathen rage, the Bible says, doesn't it? Let the heathen rage. Our faith remains solid in God's purposes. Amen? Now, I want to, at this time, read to you from Charles Wiseman, the late Charles Wiseman's book, it's called, in his book, the late, I mean, uh, America, Free, White, and Christian. I was going to mention another book that he did, but it's not that one. America, Free, White, and Christian. Well, you know what? The average American would hear that title and say, oh, that's despicable. That's terrible. That's so racist to hear that today. And yet he goes over, as you know, throughout the different states and quotes them verbatim. That America is supposed to be free, white, and Christian. But my object is not to uh, tell you about that right now, uh, necessarily go into detail on that right now, but it's to read this to you from uh, the Mayflower Compact, and it's on page 26 of his book. He says, quote, the spirit of liberty and independence did not originate in America with the patriots of the revolution uh, did not originate with the in America with the patriots of the revolutionary period. Now you I want to stop right there. A lot of people would stop and say, "Well, yes it did." No, it did not. I'm going to go on. Listen to this. But rather with the <clears throat> with the strong will spirit of the Mayflower pilgrims. The pilgrims that came to America on the Mayflower were, uh, were unlike any colonial group that had preceded them. They did not come to the new world as merchants and seekers of gold and riches, as mill adventurers or missionaries but rather as family units who desired to build houses, plant seed, and to have the freedom to worship the God of the Bible as they so desired. He's talking about fr real freedom and liberty, building on this foundation. I say to you, my friends, America must awake and get back to its Christian heritage and its Christian roots. We must promote. We must promote this gospel, I would even say. This amazing truth. Because it's right out of the pages, in many cases, of God's word. We have a biblical history. Our nation is based upon the Christian new Mayflower Covenant Foundation. It's a Christian foundation. It really is. It's a Christian foundation. Why don't we hold to that foundation? Why isn't it taught today? Where did that foundation go? Why, we'll just sweep it over here in the corner and pretend that it doesn't exist. Well, I tell you right now, we need to bring that foundation back into the picture again. We need to claim it. They prayed over that when they were offshore even. In the Mayflower Compact, they didn't want any, 
Mayflower Compact, they didn't want anybody going to the shore at this time. They wanted that document drawn up and understood and the signatures uh, attached to that. Let's not compromise on this, friends. Let's boldly declare that foundation. I want you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 now. I'm going to read some hard verses for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, hmm, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the, into the apostles of of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Gee, I think that bears repeating what all I have read here. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The Judeo-Christian type of Satan, their great Satan, it sure appears to me that these false apostles and teachers are Satan's and adversaries. If you read in context what this is talking about and warning us about, false ministers scoundrels misleading their flock. Could we have such things going on today? I wonder. Well, you bet we could. Absolutely we could. The deception is so vast. And you know what? They, they come out sounding, warning, warning, as an angel of light. And I'm telling you right now today, Pastor John Hagee from San Antonio, Texas, is one of those. Oh, he mixes some sounding good principles into his message, and then I'll go off to, let's say, the rapture. Or the fact that the Jews are God's chosen people. The very Antichrist that are behind a lot of things that are going on today, he is teaching them as your Savior, and that you need to support them. You need to worship almost their... Whatever's going on there with these types of people, and we're not going to expose them because they're God's chosen people. No, 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 they can be these filthy mouth comedians. They can be money changers in the temples. They can be deacons. They can be ministers even in your churches. They can be inspired. They can inspire these ministers or pay out money to these ministers. They can pay out money to your politicians and be great lobbyists. They can hire on people of your kind of people to go and do their dirty work in the name of it. Now, I know many of you support and look to and, and uh, accept everything, possibly, that Q is doing. Now, I'm not saying everything that Q says is wrong or false. But they had an Asian girl along recently that was sent to me, and she had this blonde hair on. She's an Asiatic. And, oh, she was a good spokesman for the group. You should listen to her and everything. Don't, don't even question. Just go right through what she says. Well, I think you better question what these types of people are saying. Some people are saying Q is financed by the CIA. Possibly. Again, I'm not saying everything that Q is saying is necessarily wrong, but I, their, Q is not my God. I don't follow Q. I follow the Bible. Amen. Amen? Follow the Bible. You will be set straight then. Oh, I need to go to Q and find out the dirty details, or I need to go to this source, or I need to go to that source. Other than the Bible, you really don't need any other source than the Word of God. But I don't understand it all. Guess what, friends? You never will. I don't understand it. everything. I still get some things wrong. I pray, though, over a lot of things. I can guarantee you that. 
And I want to be led by the truth because I want you to also be led by the truth. But there are false ministers today. But you know what? With what I read, there's an obstacle. I want you to notice that it says, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. I want to ask you a question. There are more, but I'm just, I want to ask this. All these so-called Judeo-Christian ministers, at least most of them, are they preaching damnable heresies today? And if so, are they not also preaching doctrines of devils? Oh, I don't know. I, I just couldn't go that far. Why couldn't you? The Word of God does. Politically, religiously, economically, as I've said, we are hearing doctrines of devils. By the way, I just have to mention it. My wife talked about it earlier. Our president, President Trump, told the media recently, because they asked, why aren't some of these people wearing masks today? And he said, they're peacefully protesting. I had to crack up at that because they're always always saying the enemy, I call them the enemy, the Democrats, the liberals, the Antifa, they're the enemy. I could go on and on. They're the enemy, vast portions of them. Why, they're just peacefully protesting. Are you kidding me? I don't ask for a show of hands today, but aren't you all don't you see through that? Just, you don't, you just, with, uh, I, I would say, with just a little bit of insight, with just a little bit of knowledge even, we see through this deception. We see through what's going on. We can see it with our own eyes. We hear what's going on. And by the way, I have to get this off my chest. It's not part of my notes, but I just have to get it off my chest, and I'm saying it, and you don't like it? Tough. I get, I get sent to me way more than I even send out about blacks banding together, six, seven, or more of them, against a one white person and beating and kicking and kicking and kicking them and hitting them with rocks. And making bloody pulps out of our people oftentimes. They're like animals getting together. Oh, they just, in a frenzy. And it just excites them. Friends, I want to tell you right now. Many of you know it. That's why we're living up here. Oh, it gets cold in the wintertime. I'd rather be cold in the wintertime than live with the animals. But. There's a lot that's going on. And you, my friends, had better wake up because you are the enemy. It's white. If you're white, you are the enemy. They're the ones that are talking about why it's racist America. It's white America supporting, supporting white issues. Well, you know what? I want them that way. I want it to be more and more and more and more and more. Well, we'll just come out of it a little bit. That's Judeo-Christianity. I want them all the way out. If the Bible says separate, I want them all the way out. When it's talking about assembling yourselves together, my friends, it's talking about Israel. It's not becoming talking about becoming a multicultural society in any way, shape, or form. It's talking about your kindred, your heritage that God gave you, and expect you to preserve it. But in many, in many cases, they don't. Why? We want to preserve BLM. What, Bureau of Land Management? No. Black Lives Matter. And you know what? These white deceivers who have been deceived hate you. You're the enemy. 
even by these white people. But don't you kind of love it? And I don't mean that a mean way, but I kind of love it, though, because they're getting their ox oxes gored. They're getting picked on by their own, by blacks, and kicked many times. And, they, oh, no, I'm with you, I'm with you. Haven't you seen that? Yeah, two old ladies yesterday. And it's growing. Uh, South Africa, it's growing there. Horrible things are happening there in South Africa still. Horrible things are happening today. Horrible things are happening to England. But many people, even in England, I recently saw millions of them coming out and waking up. Well, you know what, Whitey? We better wake up too. I saw horses and coming out and crowds of people coming out recently in Colorado where they were telling these Antifa-type people that get out of town. And they were forcibly throwing them out of town. Horses, uh, uh, manned by police, and other things were driving these people out. I want to see more of this. Again, we can't just get rid of a little bit of the problem and think it's going to be okay today. Friends, we need to get rid of that the problem in every way that it shows itself today. Oh, m might that be mean, Pastor? No, I think it's mean to let them have their way. I think it's mean to ab uh, abandon God's Word and just, you know, pretend that this thing might go away. I won't, You know as well as I do, this thing is not going to go away. I'm not telling anybody to grab their guns or do anything. I'm telling them, though, to get firm. I'll use that term, in what we are to do and how we are to react. Uh, recently, a little off the subject too, uh, I got this sent to me. There's a lot more on this. There's pictures and stuff on that go along with this. But it's, I'll, just to make a long story short, it says, Mega Pastor Joel Osteen joins Black Lives Matter March with the family of George Floyd. George Floyd was scum. He was absolute scum. And you know what? You some of you may not like hearing this, but I'll tell you what, that police officer had every right to do when he when you look at the whole film and what happened and what took place there, and I said this at the very beginning, when people are just jumping to conclusions on this, we need to hear the whole side. We need to look at the whole uh, uh, video of what happened there, what this guy did. He was on drugs and other things that took place. But anyway, I digress. It says, quote, In a shocking move, mega church pastor, Joel Osteen joins the family of George Floyd. Oh, and this family knew what kind of a junkie and what kind of a despicable criminal he was. But they all passed it over because, oh, they want to join in with this. And marches Joel Osteen with them in Houston. Oh, Joel Osteen, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's Judeo-Christian religion. Osteen said, quote, It's the right thing to do. Oh, is it, Joel? We need to stand against injustice and stand with our black brothers and sisters. I felt we needed to lend our voice to this as well and other things. He said, enough of him, though. Quote, and he's a big-time leader in churches. I'd rather listen to a second grader talk with an educated education of the Bible talk any day of the week than that I'm educated in these universities and I know how to put things across to people. You know. Yeah, you know how to put things across to people. You know what this man is doing? He is adding, aiding, excuse me, and abetting the enemy. Amen? When I talk about false ministers, 
I also mean false teachers, deceivers, and warning people that a lot of these people have been turned into apostles of light, have been turned or transformed into apostles of light. The Bible says this. The Bible warns against this. Transformed into apostles of light. You know, let's go ahead and go to Jude right now. It's a little bit off track. We'll go back here into 2 Corinthians a little later. But i got to get this. Jude, there's no chapters, remember. Jude chapter 3. Verse 3. Sorry, chapter I, I went and screwed up myself. <laughs> Verse 3. Beloved, it says, and we're all beloved. He's talking to us as well, okay? Beloved. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it's common to us. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you <clears throat> that we should earnestly, earnestly contend for the faith. Are we earnestly contending for the faith today, may I ask? Are we upholding the true Christian faith? I'm not saying that we should do so in some certain ways, not according to the ways of man, but according to the ways of God, we need to contend for the faith. I think God would help us a lot more if we were righteously contending for the faith today. How about you folks? Oh, we're doing it here at this church. That's fine. Well, we're doing it as a group, or we're doing it in our church. That's fine. But can you look throughout this land and say, we need a whole lot more of Christians. Mm -hmm. There is far from a remnant doing this today. There's far from 3% doing this today, which once was delivered unto the saints. This is telling me right here. You Christians, you need to stand your ground, especially today. The enemy is out there. You know it as well as I do. And they are quickly moving. They feel that it's their time. And if they don't move right now, and you know it as well as I do too. I think I've said it already. That they want to get rid of President Trump because they can get rid of you and conquer you and conquer this nation and conquer our Constitution and conquer the Bible. Oh, why bring up the Constitution, you know? Oh, that's part of our problem. Yeah, to a certain degree, but to a certain degree, it's also, uh, like Benjamin Franklin said, I've given you a republic if you can keep it. Oh, that's, it's a it, republic, it's not the Bible. Come on, folks. It, it could have a righteous connection. Now, I understand the kingdom of God, and I understand all that. But I'm telling you right now, there's an enemy out there that hates you and hates lots of different things about a Christian nation. All the ramifications of a Christian education and who we are. They want to turn this into a haven of multiculturalism, communism today. Make no mistake about that. And you know what? You know what? I got to say this too. They don't even, a lot of them don't even know what they're fighting about today. They're so stupid. I want to tell you right now. I want to tell the black people right now. You may think you're on the right side, but when the communists take over and the, communi and the communist socialists fulfill their agenda, and it is a Marxist agenda, they're going to kill you. They, you think they want you around? Sorry, buddies, they do not. You better, I'm not saying that, um, you know, when there is a 
separation and you are among your own kind, that's where you should be. When we're among our own kind, that's where we should be. When Indians are among their, their kind or Asians are among their kind, that's how they should be. But I want to warn you again, black people, whoever you spread this to them, they're going to come after you. I can guarantee you that. Verse 4. Here is a big one right here. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men, it warns us. Well, do you believe this? You better. It didn't come from me. This warning comes from, again, the Word of God. And notice this. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. Notice, though they, these people once knew this, it was meaning previously understood how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, I love this referring back to that again. You may, well, it's old information. No, it's not. It's very pertinent to what's going on today, what God did. Afterwards, destroyed them that believed not. Oh, God would destroy people that believe not. Yes, he would. Have you all forgotten Noah, uh, that flood, Noah's flood, what he did there? Have you forgot what he did in Egypt? Have you, have you forgotten what he's done to the enemies? Have you awakened to, what was that, I think 185,000 when he's got sent an angel, and they woke up, as the Bible says, as dead men? And various other situa situations like that? Yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah. Certain men, it says, certain men crept in unawares. Well, you know, this tells me that they looked and they acted like everyone else. Oh, these are uh, the enemy. Yeah, they're terrors, they're snakes, they're wolves. But I believe also what's warning us about those that have transformed. How might they be transformed? Think about it. How might they be transformed? In their minds. And so they creep in and think they're go doing God's will. Or they think they're doing so under orders by the Communist Manifesto or the Talmud. And they'll get in high places and play the game and, and uh, tell these ministers what to preach or what not to preach or I'm going to cut off your money. It, sort of like that. We better wake up, friends. Guard your hearts, Christians. People get sidetracked by lies and deception. Today, churches are full of deceived Christians. I'm sad to report that to you, but that's truth. These churches are full of deception and deceived Christians. I, again, I wonder how many parents have sent their young people off to these universities and colleges today only to have them indoctrinated into a world of deceit and corruption. You know, looks, even attitudes are deceiving, are they not? Yes, they are. Massive deception is going on today. Lies being taught in place of the truth. Facts distorted with confusing information. And that's how they do it. They confuse your values. They confuse the Word of God when people don't know the Word of God well enough. They confuse our history. 
They, they confuse all kinds of things to destroy, destroy, distort that foundation, that Christian foundation. How many have started out with that foundation and gone to these universes, come out hating their parents again in God? I'm going to repeat that again because that is the main, goes right to the heart of the problem that we're having today. No teaching of Jesus. Is that any surprise? No teaching of the Bible. No real history. They are given no real foundation. Actually, these young people, they do what? They become, well, the Bible says it, twice the child of hell. They do. These kids, look at them today. And the way they're acting, the way they're behaving, and the destruction that they're perpetrating, they have become twice the child of hell. They actually become false lights, deceiving destructors. The spiritually blind willingly go along with these transformed, or I shall say, recreated and made to appear as apostles, as the Bible says. But in reality, they are false apostles, and many of them become deceivers of the gospel, history, and our heritage. They are spreading a multitude or a multitudinous amount of lies, half-truths, and falsities, transforming people's minds again into embracing and accepting twisted facts. And they don't know enough of the Word of God to decipher and separate these lies. You know, let me just mention some of them to you. Do you mind if I do that to you today? Of course I knew you wouldn't. They made and have made false claims about race mixing, that it's okay to mix your races. You know, in many ways I will call that a sin which you're not going to get back from. You're not going to be able to retrieve from this particular sin. God's not going to say, oh, it's okay. Just pray over them and it'll be okay. Well, that sounds terrible. That really sounds bad. It sounds unloving to me, Pastor. You mean there's a lot of these children that have been created out of this type of these types of unions, and wouldn't God accept everybody? Well, first of all, you need to study that out for yourself. No, I want you to tell us, Pastor. Well, you think for one minute, if you're a, a disbeliever, that Pastor Barley's word is going to uh, suffice for this? Do you think I could quote to you one, two, three, or four, or five different verses on this in your minds? Oh, oh I'm convinced now, Pastor. Do you think that it's going to work? Or do you think reading the Word of God and studying it in many, 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 many different places and reaffirming this truth in your mind, not this Judeo-Christian gospel, Deception, that that would reinforce truth in your minds? Yes. So don't believe me on this. Believe what the Word of God tells you about race mixing. It is very, very serious. Also, make false claims about usury and money. Do they not today? Again, what does the Word of God have to say about this? I'll bet your minister doesn't tell you much, if anything, on that, about the Federal Reserve, about the so-called money we have today. It's debt money, isn't it? Yeah, it's debt money. Created out of thin air by these Edomites, I'll say. And they have many, many others backing them up. Because of the love of money. False claims, again, about money. Because they don't want you to understand the real 
truth about money, the ramifications of money, and what it's doing to us. They're also lying to us about who the true Israelites are. By what? By teaching that the Jews are God's chosen people, Pastor Hagee and others. By teaching that the not us, if you are the true Israelites, and I'm saying you are, and they're teaching a false form of this, what would you call that deception? What would you call that, I call it outright lying to people, we need to be set, be set free by the truth. They lie about many false forms of salvation or about salvation. Why, you just come down the aisle and accept Jesus Christ, your Savior, and we'll pray over you or we'll baptize you even. I'm not preaching against water baptism necessarily, but I'm telling you, there is also such a thing as a baptism of God's Word that we better get right. But they'll stop there, many of them. But this false form of salvation is being taught for everyone. Is that truth from the Word of God or is that a lie? Again, you have to check these things out. Well, I don't know, I've never heard it. I might just check you out on that. Do! But there are books and there are uh, Bible verses that you had best look at and seriously consider with your mind. They lie to us about heaven and hell, don't they? In place of the kingdom. And many other so-called Bible doctrines. Falsities in place of the truth. Therefore, what are they? Becoming unto us many Satans. Angels of light. A Satan again? Yeah, that's what the Judeo-Christians tell us is going on. What does that word Satan mean? Adversary. Aren't there many adversaries? Oh, no, the word is Antichrist, Pastor. Yeah, aren't there many Antichrist? Aren't there many deceivers today? Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I mean, chapter 11 and verse 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15. Now, I'm not going to be able to go over this uh, in depth with you. We've got to move on. 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness transformed into ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You know, this is talking about the adversary, and there are many adversaries, many antichrist, many deceivers, many distractors today. When we want to, we want to just dwell on this Satan issue, And do you want to forget who these transformed ministers of the apostles are? These deceivers? These false ministers? These false teachers? What are they doing to people today? So think about it. It really is, it says, no great thing meaning there shouldn't be anything astonishing about this if ministers are also transformed or looked upon as ministers of righteousness, the Word of God says. And I might add, when they mostly are not. Now, don't be confused by this term, their works. It says at the end of this verse, their works. This simply means they play right along with their words of deception or their words of, I will call them, fancy They're, or f fanaticize, kind of. 
They fanaticize. Well, they're doing that with the babies today. But I want to move it on over to uh, they're being fanatical with their doctrines, with their deception. They live according to their lies. And they're practicing this deception, which are words preached, which are, again, I will add, transformed into false forms of light right out of darkness. Right out of darkness. Get this. Manipulating the truth through subtlety. They want our minds. They want people's minds and hearts. And people are mesmerized by this deception. People can be easily conned, can't they? Easily conned. I like that word, conned. Verse 16 says, I say again, let no man deceive or think me a fool. Paul says this. Let no man think me a fool. In other words, don't let deception turn you into fools. He says, if otherwise... Now this, Paul was a lawyer. It gets a little confusing in some of this, so bear with me, okay? If otherwise, he says, meaning some of you may become fools, yet as a fool, he says, in that some people have become fools, because he talks about them as being fools, receive me that I may boast myself a little. Gosh, this is getting confusing. Well, you know what Paul is saying, that he at least hopes some people might stop being fools through his preaching and teaching and come into the truth. What? Well, look. Look on. Verse 17. That which I speak, I speak. It is not after the Lord. Well, he's telling us the truth here. Wouldn't you rather that he tell us the truth? But it's in the Bible. I think it's kind of anointed, don't you? But he says, I speak not after the Lord. Thank you, Paul, for admitting that, though. We'll bear that in mind as we go on here. In other words, the Apostle Paul is not speaking 100% truth, he's, spe he's talking or exercising some degree of liberty in what he is telling us. So, there is some degree of doubt or room to fudge in what we are reading here. Okay, I will admit that. He goes on to say, though, but as it were foolishly, he lists that again, he talks about this again. But as it were foolishly, in this confidence of boasting, seeing that I may glory, he says, after the flesh, I will glory also. I wonder what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Because he says, or he speaks of glory in the flesh. Now, I'm almost through. And he has made this mistake from time to time in what he is saying. He's not perfect. The Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. Amen? But let's face it, brethren. Many do glory after the flesh. Do they not? They desire, meaning their emotions. They desire to glory after the flesh rather than the Holy Spirit, don't they? Friends, we are never wrong. By staying with God's Word, are we? Never wrong by staying with this Holy Spirit. Never wrong in reading and praying about truth and the Word of God. Now, this ends part one. We are going to have a part two. So, bear with me in this. I hope it's been illuminating. It's sparked a divine light in you today through the foolishness 
of my preaching, but it's, may I say, meant to help us come to a knowledge of truth. Lord Jesus, we pray to you now. We thank you for what you have done for each and every one of us. We want your will to be done in us. We want your truth. We want your way, your life, your freedom. The foundation that you've laid for us here is right before our eyes if we would but open them and perceive this truth and this enlightenment. It's, the enemy has their enlightenment called the Babylonian Talmud, the the uh, Kabbalah, but you have your strength. I'm so glad for that strength that is written about how to act, how to behave, how to work, how to live. It tells us all these things that are freedom, spell out freedom and liberty through you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.